All right. Thank you, guys. Happy Monday morning to you. Let's go ahead and start off the show and take a look at Wisconsin squaring off against Purdue. And that's going to be a 7 o'clock Eastern tip-off. The Purdue Boilermakers are minus 12 and a half with the total at 140 juice to the over. Before we go ahead and break down this game, I just want to give you a quick reminder that we are um, we're eight and three in our last 11 dollar 99 daily best plays on my website at brockpage.com. And if you want to access today's dollar 99 daily best play, it's only going to cost you just one dollar and 99 cents. And the link for that pick is in the description section below. And once again, uh, some of you may be wondering if you want to know the difference between what I do here on YouTube and what I do on my website, you know, what the difference is. Well, what I do here on YouTube is I provide an opinion on every single game that's on the slate side in total. And uh, what I do on my website is, well, a little bit more reasonable. Uh, I share with you which games that I'm actually betting on personally, uh, games that I actually have my own action on. And no, it's not uh, like, it's not 32 picks. Uh, I don't bet every single game. Uh, that is certainly not sustainable. Um, now, if you want to access every single pick that I give out on that website, um, you're going to want to sign up for my board member tier package where we are also three and two in our last five plays in that particular category. But when it comes to this Wisconsin-Purdue matchup, the Boilermakers are currently on a four-game winning streak with victories over the likes of Butler and NC State during that span. Now, Purdue's also gotten the W in 12 out of their last 13 ball games, and they're scoring, uh, they're scoring 91 points a game at home. Jaden Ivey is averaging nearly 17 points a game along with five rebounds and three assists. The sophomore from South Bend, he's also drilling 45% of his three-pointers. This guy can't miss from long range. Meanwhile, Zach Eady scoring 14 points a game himself along with seven rebounds. Purdue's one of the best shooting teams in the country as they're making 53% of their field goals this season at home. And when it comes to shooting from downtown as a team, Purdue's making nearly 44% of their three-pointers at the Mackey Arena. Uh, these guys are certainly the offensive juggernauts. Now, they're squaring off against a Wisconsin team who has a bunch of guys who may be sitting this one out here tonight. Um, I don't have too many details, although I have to assume it's most likely COVID-related. But uh, anyway, Higginbottom, Neath, uh, Carlson, Bowman, and Taphorn, they are all listed as questionable for tonight's action. Now, the Badgers have really had some issues offensively this season. They're scoring just 62 points a game away from home, and they're making just 29% of their three-pointers in that same category. And it certainly seems as if Purdue has had the uh, Badgers number here in recent meetings. Wisconsin actually dropped seven out of their last 10 meetings with Purdue, and they successfully covered the point spread in just 20% of those ball games. So uh, the historical trend certainly favoring Purdue backers. Now, total-wise, Wisconsin did see their last two straight get over the post number, six and three to the over in their last nine. Meanwhile, Purdue on the other side of things, they saw four out of their last five meetings with the Badgers, get over the number as well. I'm going to lean toward Purdue, minus 12 and a half, and the over 140. Next ball game, uh, actually moving backwards a little bit here, but uh, anyway, next game, it is going to be Towson versus Drexel, 6 o'clock Eastern start time. The reason why we're moving backwards is I can't start off the show with Towson versus Drexel. I just can't. It's not juicy enough, but uh, it is a game of significance, a game you may want to think about firing on uh, once again, Towson versus Drexel, 6 o'clock Eastern start time. Now, the Towson Tigers are minus one with the total at 140 and a half. I think this is a pretty advantageous number here. Towson's done a uh, pretty nice job of uh, stringing together a handful of wins here recently. As a matter of fact, the Tigers are on a three-game winning streak, and they also got the W in six out of their last seven. But most importantly for, for betters, for uh, you know sports betters here, Towson's amongst the best covering teams in college basketball. 
They're 11-2 against the spread in their last 13 outings, and that's good for 85% during that particular category. Probably a lot of sharps out there that have been pounding these guys. Um, I don't know if it's a if it's a good kept secret anymore, man. These guys are covering a, a lot of games. The Tigers are also doing a real nice job defensively this season. They're in the top 25 in defensive boards on the road. They're limiting their competition to just 39% shooting from the field in that same category. Now, scoring-wise, Nick Timberlake is averaging 14.5 points per contest, along with four rebounds and 42% shooting from beyond the arc. Meanwhile, Cam Holden is drilling 42% of his three-pointers himself, along with 9.5 boards. They're taking on a Drexel team who's been little threat shooting the three ball themselves. The Dragons are making only 31% of their three-pointers, and they also lost three out of their last five ball games. Meanwhile, defensively on the other uh, end of the court here, Drexel is also one of the worst teams in the nation in defending the three ball. Now, total-wise, five out of Drexel's last eight ball games got over the posted number. Meanwhile, Towson went four and one to the over in their last five. I'm going to lean toward the Towson Tigers, minus one, over 140 and a half. Next ball game. It is going to be Washington versus Arizona, 8 o'clock Eastern start time. Arizona's minus 22 and a half, totals 152. And although I'd normally be very reluctant to lay this kind of ridiculous number in a conference game, I don't know what to tell you. The Wildcats have been absolutely dominant at home this season. Arizona's scoring over 95 points a game at the McHale Center, and they're making nearly 41% of their three-pointers as a team in that building. Benny Mathurin scoring over 18 points a game, along with six boards and a couple assists. Meanwhile, Azzy Tubelis is scoring 15 points a game himself, along with six boards and a couple assists as well. When it comes to getting rebounds, well, these guys are amongst the best to do it. Arizona's in the top three in the country in offensive boards. They're taking on a Washington team who lost three out of their last four, and they've had a real tough time covering the number here recently. As a matter of fact, Washington has failed to cover the point spread in seven out of their last 10 ball games, and they're making only 28% of their three-pointers as a team. This Husky offense is also being held to just 39% shooting from the field. So once again, although this is a huge number, uh, in a conference game, um, Arizona's rolling, and uh, I don't think um, I don't think Washington can hang with them. But anyway, total wise, Washington did see their last two straight fall under the line, sixty percent of the under in their last ten. Meanwhile, Arizona saw their last two fall under the total themselves, and those were unders against uh, Tennessee and Cal Baptist during that span. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward. Arizona minus 22 and a half and the under 152. Next ball game, we're going to go into the Big Ten. I'm talking about Maryland versus Iowa, 907 Eastern tip off. The Iowa Hawkeyes are minus seven and a half, totals 152. Pretty good number here, in my opinion, with Iowa. Uh, they've been cashing in on a handful of tickets here recently. The Hawkeyes are seven and two against the number in their last nine ball games. Now, the Hawkeyes have also been really good at home this year as they've won eight out of their first nine contests at the Carver-Hawkeye Arena. Uh, certainly uh, something good to watch there for the home crowd. Now, Keegan Murray scoring over 23.5 points a game along with eight rebounds and a couple of blocks. Meanwhile, Chris Murray, he is drilling over 47% of his three-pointers. He doesn't miss, and he averages double-digit points a game. I was averaging 95 points a game in front of their home crowd. They're taking on a Maryland club who's had real trouble uh, cashing tickets for their backers recently themselves. The Terps failed to cover in four out of their last six ball games, And they also failed to cover against the likes of Lehigh, Hofstra, and George Mason this year. The Terps have also been pretty much little threat shooting from downtown this year as well, as they're making only 30% of their three-pointers. Certainly some problem areas for Maryland backers. Uh, I wouldn't completely rule them out, but um, it's going to be a tough one for you. It could potentially, <coughs> I'm 
get dicey for you uh, if you're if you're catching the points with the Terps. Now, total wise, two out of the Terrapins' last three ball games got over the posted number. Meanwhile, Iowa saw their last three straight get over the total themselves. They also went 77% to the over for the entire season. I'm going to go ahead and lean toward Iowa minus 7.5 and, and the over 152. Next contest, more Pac-10, I'm sorry, Pac-12 action. Ah, Pac-10. Hasn't been the Pac-10 in, what, 20 years? Jeez Louise. Uh, Pac-12 action. I'm talking about Colorado versus Oregon, 10 o'clock east. The Oregon Ducks are minus eight with a total at 133. Now, I've been a little chalky here today, but, you know, breaking down this game, you know, the Ducks, despite laying nearly double digits in this, uh, in this game, you know, Oregon really hasn't done a good job covering the point spread this year. As a matter of fact, the Ducks failed to cover in seven out of their last 10 ball games. And they're amongst the worst offensive rebounding teams at home in the Pac-12. Oregon's failed to cover the number this year against the likes of Pepperdine and UC Riverside. They're taking on a Colorado team who's on a three-game winning streak themselves, and they do a real nice job of getting rebounds. These guys are pretty strong underneath the boards. And as a matter of fact, the Buffs are in the top 35 in the nation in defensive rebounding. Now, scoring-wise, Jabari Walker's averaging 13 points a game along with eight rebounds. Meanwhile, Evan Batty scores over a dozen points a game himself, along with four boards. Now, when it comes to the scoring in this one, Colorado saw contests with Stanford, Duquesne, and Maine get over the posted number. Meanwhile, Oregon's gone 7-1 to the over in their last eight themselves. I'm going to lean toward Colorado, plus eight, catching the points in the over 133. And with that, guys, we're going to go ahead and jump into our quick pick recap powered to you by my website at brockpage.com where we are 8 and 3 in our last 11 dollar 99 daily best plays i like purdue minus 12 and a half over 140 1000 minus 1 over 140 and a half arizona minus 22 and a half under 152 iowa minus 7 and a half over 152 Colorado plus eight over 133. And as far as all the other games go, I like Alabama State minus 10 over 152 and a half. Oregon State minus 14 under 135 and a hook. Florida AM and minus three over 131 and a half. UT Rio Grande plus seven and a half over 142. Alabama AM plus one under 129. Before I give you my next and final free pick for the video, one final reminder that if you want to access every single pick that I give out on my BrockPage.com website, you're going to want to sign up for my board member tier package picks, where we are currently 3-2 and two in our last five plays in that category. I'm going to lean toward Texas Southern minus 1.5 <coughs> in the under 137. <clears throat> and with that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on BrockPage.com. If you guys do end up getting a membership here today on my website, just keep in mind we utilize the Patreon platform, and Patreon's going to bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So if you do end up getting a membership here today on my website, you're going to get access to those picks all the way through the end of January. Certainly good value for you. Uh, it's darn near max value. Because I always tell folks in every single video, the earlier in the month you sign up, the better. Obviously, the first of the month is your best absolute max value. But signing up on January 3rd, that ain't bad either. That's, uh, that's like I said, darn near max value. But uh, anyway, guys, most importantly, I got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. I'm sure you guys are tired of me plugging my website. But I have to. I have to do it. I, I owe it to you. You know what I mean? I, I don't want to be holding out on, uh, you know, really good plays and, uh, you know, not giving that out to you guys. So I got to let you know, I got to, it's, 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 it's me doing my due diligence, um, you know, to my viewers who view the free content. But uh, anyway, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. I really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, guys, um, happy Monday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website, 
at broadpage.com.